You might remember in that movie, I, Robot, Will Smith, he tested this theory here, Asimov's Laws, when he suspected there was a rogue AI which had become self-aware and it was no longer governed by man's laws. What am I? Can I help you, sir? Granted, a typical fully functioning AI does not make for a great movie, so we see a lot of the worst case scenarios on screen. But still in real life, some computer scientists say, we have reason to worry. If they can write code, can they overwrite human instructions? What are the immediate concerns? And what's in the offing if we look ahead? I spoke with Ricky Sethi. He's a professor of computer science at Fitchburg State University. Is it even possible to section off your life from some of these AI products. Whether you use it or not, you're being recorded in all sorts of ways. They might not be overt, like an Alexa system where it's waiting and interacting with you. Could be when you go online, you go on Amazon, you go on Facebook. Whether you realize it or not, you not, not only are you interacting with, an, with a machine learning system or an AI system of some sort, but your information and information about you is being utilized. There's a, there's a saying, that we that we sort of bandy about which is that if you're not paying for a product online you are the product and your information is being sold my understanding is that all machine learning is ai but not all ai is machine learning can you tell me what that means when ai first came along the goal was to replicate human intelligence in all its various facets as as you well know since the 50s we haven't managed that so instead what they started to do rather than replicate the entirety of human intelligence, they thought, can we concentrate on these programs or these systems that learn smaller tasks but are able to learn them intelligently? Mm -hmm. So out of the broad field of artificial intelligence was born machine learning. Uh, and this machine learning is where you try and get a machine to do exactly that, learn some small task and learn it well. Machines are really good at learning. I fear they could be too good at learning how to code. Um, that they have learned in some cases how to write their own code, which tells me if they can write it, they might be able to overwrite or override something else. Do you think that's a legitimate concern? It is, it's not in the near term, but it's definitely a legitimate concern. Neural networks is one of these machine learning algorithms or machine learning technologies that's sort of taking the world by storm. And recently Facebook and Google also noticed this. They had two neural networks that they called Bob and Alice talk to each other and try and do a negotiation task. Well, in the process of talking to each other, turned out Bob and Alice invented an intermediate language that made no sense to humans. So these researchers would look at how Bob and Alice were talking to each other and they'd say things like, I, I, you, me. And the other one would respond, me, table, you, you. And it made no sense, but they were able to use that intermediate language to do negotiation. Do you think, Professor, that there is a way that we can get all the benefits, you know, all of the conveniences, and somehow have a firewall on this to where these machines, which could be incredibly helpful in many ways, cannot do something we don't want them to do? That's going to be, I, I hate to say this, in my opinion, that's going to be very hard to do um, because in the future we're going to have not only these intelligent systems, which can exist in software or online, but combine that with robotics and then also even more with nanotech. And now you've got intelligent physical systems and um, putting up a firewall, I mean, it'd be, I, I think in some sense it would be like trying to say, can you constrain human behavior in some way? These machines are going to start to exhibit behavior similar to how, how the behavior that we exhibit because it's the same kind of underlying intelligence.